Hi, my name is Michelle. I'm the account manager with Van City Savings Credit Union. The first thing I asked Michelle was why not use your personal bank account for all your business banking instead of opening up a more expensive business bank account? Um, there may be cases where you're unable to operate your business transactions out of a personal account. Those uh, cases might be when you receive checks in your business name. Um, so if you do landscaping and it's uh, Michelle Landscaping, um, you would not be able to deposit into your own personal account under just Michelle. Um, another reason that you would like to do um, banking transactions out of a separate banking account is for better bookkeeping and audit. Now when Michelle is talking about keeping your personal transactions separate from your business transactions is better for bookkeeping, what she means is, is that when you have your personal and business banking all into one bank account, everything kind of gets mixed up so it's hard to tell for yourself and for the government what's a business transaction, whether it's income or expense, and what's a personal transaction, income or expense. Now the second reason for having a separate bank account just for business is the reconciliation process. And reconciliation is when you're matching those receipts with your statement. And with a mixed account, both for personal and business banking, you're not going to have all the receipts to match up with that account. You're never going to have all of them. You're always going to have missing receipts because you're not going to keep your personal receipts. Or if you do keep your personal receipts, you've got to enter all your personal receipts in just to make everything match up. That's kind of a nightmare. Uh, when you have a separate bank account just for business, you know that each line item on that statement needs to have an accompanying receipt. So it's easy to find things. Or if you had an error in data entry, is to figure out where was that error. Maybe you typed in instead of uh, $79, you typed in $97. So when you do that reconciliation, you can find that out. And at the end of the day, you'll know that all your business records are spot on when you have that separate bank account and you do that reconciliation process. So for a sole proprietorship, we would ask um, firstly whether or not your company has its name registered. So if your company's uh, name is registered, then we would ask for the Certificate of Provincial Registration. If not registered, then we would ask for one of the following. We would either ask for your business number, which is issued to you by Canada Revenue Agency. Um, we could also ask for your business liability insurance, or lastly, your business license or permit. And that would be issued by your city or local municipality. Um, you would need to register your sole proprietor in BC if your business name does not include your individual um, full name or if it doesn't describe the specific um, description of the business. So for example, if your sole proprietor is, um, let's say your name is John Doe and your company is John Doe Plumbing, then you probably don't need to register your company. However, if your company is Doe Plumbing, um, then as it doesn't distinguish uh, you as an individual, you would likely need to register your company. For a partnership, uh, the d documentation is a little different. We would also require for a partnership agreement. Um, and the partnership agreement is, it can be a, an agreement drafted between just the partners of the company um, detailing things like the description of the business, the commencement date of the partnership, the division of profits and whatnot. Um, we would generally recommend that members seek uh, legal advice prior to drafting up this agreement, um, as with any agreement really. And uh, in addition to the purchase agreement, we would ask for business number, that sort of thing. When you're just starting off your business, most people start off with just a personal credit card. Now one of the things I found funny was that when you walk into a bank, they recommend a business bank account. But when you're talking about credit cards, they actually don't recommend or don't allow you to get a business credit card. And the reason being is that when you're a startup business, new, you don't have any credit history. So it's kind of hard to get a credit card without that credit history. So there's uh, several ways that you can set up a credit card for your business. The first um, and most common way is by having the um, sole proprietor apply for it under his own name. And under such a situation, the um, credit would be established by the sole proprietor. 
so any payment performance would affect that sole proprietor's credit report. Um, if you were to be added as a co-applicant on such account, then it would also affect the co-applicant's credit report. However, if you're just being added as an additional cardholder, um, any repayment history and performance on the additional cardholder would not affect their own credit report, but it would re reflect um, on the primary cardholder. Uh, the last is a corporate guarantee credit card and with a corporate guarantee um, these are usually issued to companies that are much bigger and much more established because it's based on the company and in such a situation it um, does not get reported on any of the uh, individual card holders credit reports. Now if you do want to get a business credit card uh, there's a couple things you can do but one of them is to put a hold of funds that will cover that credit card so say you'll put up if you have a five thousand dollar credit card limit you put a five thousand dollars on hold just in case you don't pay your bill they know they have that five thousand dollars there not a lot of people like freezing five thousand dollars just to secure a credit card so the more popular route is just to use a personal credit card for your business needs now this doesn't mean mixing up your personal and business transactions on that credit card what they're recommending is getting a completely separate credit card only for business transactions and when you build up enough credit history then yeah you can get a business credit card if you do so choose. An alternative to opening up a business account um, is to open up a sub account in a personal account um, and so that is another way to save on some fees. Um, that would be a way that you could kind of start off if you're still receiving checks under your name. Again, if it's under a business name, then we would not be able to deposit into the account. And some financial institutions don't structure their accounts with sub-accounts. So that's an, another thing to look into. What? I didn't know this. I didn't know, even know you could have sub-accounts. So if you're going to go the personal checking account route, I suggest if you can, do a sub-account so you can keep your transactions separate. And if you're not going to do a sub account and you still want to go the personal route, then at least open up a separate personal bank account for those needs. Um, so ordering personal checks is often much um, more inexpensive than ordering business checks. Ordering business checks typically cost um, upwards of $100, whereas with personal checks it's closer to about $20, if at all. Um, and you could just ask your financial institution for those um, check fees. Um, so that's an additional expense that you can expect to incur if you're operating out of a business account. With both personal accounts and business accounts, your financial institution will likely be able to offer you some temporary checks to start off. Um, they may or may not charge for those. Um, most new accounts at Van City, we do not charge for your first few um, temporary checks. So every uh, bank account has a limit of how many temporary checks you can receive, whether it's a personal checking um, account or a business checking account. And so after the first few, it's required that you order your own book of checks. If you're incorporated, um, you cannot use your personal banking account for business transactions because your business transactions will be made to your business name and that'll be an incorporated um, entity and therefore a separate legal entity. Um, and so when you receive checks under um, Greg Landscaping, um, you will not be able to deposit it into just your personal account under Greg. I bet you didn't think that business banking would be so fraught with choices and options. But there you go. I hope you found that useful. Later. <laughs>